sleaze me, Fram. We're going to the courtroom, Barnes. I don't oh, know if yeah. you've been following this story, but Marvel actor Jonathan Majors in court returning to his Manhattan penthouse after a quote-unquote alleged fight with his then-girlfriend. He found her, Grace Jabari, lying unconscious in their bedroom suite on a Saturday morning in March. He then called 911. Uh, she's my ex-partner. Um, we broke up. I came back. She, she sent me text messages um, insinuating this much. Um, um, I stayed in a hotel last night. I came home this morning. Um, I banged on the door. I've been at the apartment for about 40 minutes now. I banged at the door. Um, I couldn't get in. Um, I finally went downstairs and asked um, the doorman to help us. And um, uh, they let me in via the, the handyman. Um, yeah. I'll tell you who needs to be resuscitated is the 911 operator. What is going on with that 911 operator? I mean, she sounds drunk. The crazy part about this story, outside of the fact that he is maintaining his innocence all along because of this fight, he is now facing charges of assault in the third degree with intent to cause physical injury, assault in the third degree, recklessness causing physical injury, and aggravated harassment. The crazy part about this story are the text messages between Jabari and his ex-girlfriend, and he started threatening suicide. He texted her back saying he didn't want her to go to the doctor. I mean, when you look at these text messages, it really makes him look guilty. And she's like, I won't go to the doctor if you don't want me to. And here she is, like in major pain. Terrible story. He, he sounds defeated more than he does. He does sound defeated. Sad or, or you know, freaking out. He just sounds defeated. It's a crazy story. And, you know, every day there's something new with it. So we will we'll definitely keep you posted on it. Um, the delayed 75th annual Primetime Emmys, only a month away. But the ceremony finally has a host, Anthony Anderson from Blackish. He's going to be the host. January 15th on Fox Live at 8 p.m. All these stories are coming out. You know, they got the Golden Globe nominees, Daytime Emmys, award. You know how much I love award season. Oh, yeah. he. I saw him at the Delta Sky Club one time in the E-Terminal in Atlanta. We were waiting for a flight, and he was. it was like he was the uh, MC of a party. He was just in there by himself, but he was really? talking to everybody was he at every table. Court? He was totally holding court. Really nice guy. Kim Kardashian, who, as you know, is a billionaire, she added private plane owner to her list of accomplishments when she bought this Gulfstream jet 2022 a reported 95 million now in true Kim Kardashian form she fitted out the aircraft with some custom modifications and now spending about 150 million dollars cashmere seats two bathrooms I mean I guess if you're a billionaire why not 150 million is not that much, right? Well, I'll make a bold statement. I will never own a plane, obviously. Uh, it would be great if I did. But do you realize, you know, we all have to go maybe get our oil changed or do something real simple for a car. When you, every year, if you have a plane, did you know, Leslie, you have to send it away to some place where they basically dismantle it and rip out the insides, x-ray the wings for, like, safety reasons. I didn't know that. It costs, like, a hundred grand. And they basically pull it all apart and put it back together again to make sure that it's safe. And where do you send it off to? Like, I've never heard this before. I I just learned, I was talking to someone who has a plane, and they were telling me about it. And I was like, are you kidding me? A hundred thousand dollars just to get, you know, a wire, wire stretch? I mean, they... They pull all the interior out, and they make sure the wires aren't, like, crimped or, like, messed up. I mean, it's crazy. I guess if you're a billionaire, it doesn't matter. We'll talk to you Jimmy. You can afford it. Jimmy's real estate czar. He's got two planes now. Matt Reif back in the news. Comedian Matt Reif. This YouTuber, Brooke Schofield, says that it's her ex, and he cheated on her with 20 women before ultimately blocking her number, what turned out to be a brutal breakup. She was on this podcast... She started talking about it, and apparently, I guess she saw pictures of him with another woman on TikTok as she was dating him. And then she uh, DM'd this woman, and now they're talking. She's like in a group chat now with other women. Conspicuous timing, I would say. 
Dude's all over the news, all over Netflix. I don't care for the guy. He hates Atlanta. He hates, you know, everything about it, as we've played in clips before. But, yeah, sounds the timing is interesting for her. Have you seen the other backlash, though, for him? No. Allegedly telling a six-year-old how his mother affords presents. Oh. Uh. Yeah, this woman came after him. And, of course, he couldn't shut up, right? And he just went on and said something to her about, the, or something to the kid about, your mom can afford presents because she's on OnlyFans. Like, What? Yeah, his his vile humor is just awful. That's terrible. I do have a uh, I, I do want to end on a really nice story, and I don't know if you saw this or not. Country superstar Luke Combs, you know, who had that huge hit re- redoing Fast Car from yeah. Tracy Chapman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is really nice, and he wants to make things right for this fan in Florida after learning that his legal team, because you know a lot of legal teams go after people with counterfeit merchandise. Well, they went after this fan for $250,000. What'd she do? Nicole Harness, she got the idea to start selling these Luke Combs-themed tumblers after she went to a show. So she got the artwork online. She sold 18 of the tumblers for 20 bucks, a total of $380, right? She suffers from congenital heart failure, been in the hospital um, she got home and realized I'm being sued for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Well, Luke's like, no, 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 no. That is not going to happen on my watch. They're only supposed to go after large corporations. So he turned around, dropped the lawsuit immediately. A woman that's being sued by me for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I've spent the last two hours trying to to make this right. And so we do have a company that goes after supposedly large corporations making counterfeit t-shirts, things of that nature, running illegal businesses. And she got in trouble apparently for making tumblers. So she told me there's $5,500 locked up in her Amazon account. I'm going to double that, send her $11,000 today. I'm going to make my own tumbler today. All that money is going to go to Nicole and her family. And uh, I invited Nicole and her family out to a show uh, this year so I could give her a hug and say sorry in person. Feel good story of the week. Well, you know, we talk about movie sequels all the time, and a lot of times they don't hold up. I'll tell you the one I think that has held up, Barnes, Ocean's Eleven. Completely. Completely. Now, I freaking love this series. George Clooney now teasing a sequel that could be in the works. He says, I've got a good script in hand. He was uh, recently interviewed and said, we have a really good script for another Ocean's now. We may end up doing another one. It's actually a really good script. And then he said, I don't want to call out the name. I don't want to say it's Ocean's 14. I mean, the idea is kind of like going in style. So we will see. Got to bring back the OGs for it as well. That and Mission Impossible. You just can't go wrong. I love every single Mission Impossible. Tiffany Haddish has officially been charged with DUI following her arrest in November. If you remember, we told you she was arrested by Beverly Hills Police for a suspected DUI she was asleep at the wheel. Remember that story? Yes. And then in January, for an alleged DUI in Georgia. Oh. And now the L.A. District Attorney's Office has decided to charge her with DUI, 0.08 blood alcohol content. She has gone on to say, though, because I think she was doing stand-up somewhere, and she said she has stopped drinking. You would think after the wow. first time, but after the second time? Yeah, t- two DUIs? Yeah, of course they're going to proceed with the charges. That just... Man, if people that I've known that have gotten a DUI, they say that is the most sobering. Like, you immediately are like, yeah. What is it? I wonder why they can't think that way before they think that they're just going to get by with it. It's so not worth it. You're a celebrity. Get a driver. Yeah, it's so not worth it. Or get an Uber. Get an Uber. Plug bell. Speaking of drinking, Barnes, before he died, Shane McGowan of the Pogues. This is a great story. He set aside $12,500 to pay for drinks at his post-funeral celebration. A friend quote said it was Shane's last request. Well, there's an Irishman for you. Rest in peace. Buy everybody drinks. Yep. There is a naughty line in the Santa Claus that Disney had to cut out after all these years. Uh, I saw this story in the Post about an article that said a scene where Tim Allen's ex gives him a slip of paper so he can reach her over the holidays. Well, Tim's character quips this 1-800 number that sounds slightly provocative. Uh, guess what, Barnes? Turns out it was and still is a real sex hotline. Here's that scene. Well, 
The reason I know that this is true is because when I saw this way back then, I called the number. And it, and it is true. Why is it taking so long, though, to find out? It's shocking that Disney even let that float to begin with. But yeah, yes. here's, a, here's the scene. Watch. Here's Neil's mom's number in case. 1-800-SPANK-ME. I know that number. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas to you, too. Can you imagine how much that would cost, like, for product placement these days to get that in there? Well, first of all, this happened in 94. I know. Disney found out the hard way that it was real. Parents started complaining they were calling the number. But what do they do about, like, the VHSs and the laser discs? It's out. I mean, they just hope that that stuff doesn't come back around. But whoever owns 1-800-SPANK-ME, I'm sure has made a couple million bucks (laughs) off of that. Oh, Oprah is now copying to this, and I'm glad she is being honest and real. Oprah Winfrey has never been able to shake off rumors and gossip about her weight. So now, following months of speculation, you know, she was on the red carpet for the color purple, looking unbelievable. She has admitted to using a weight loss drug to avoid what she calls yo-yoing. Quote, the fact that there's a medically approved prescription for managing weight and staying healthier in my lifetime feels like relief, like redemption, like a gift and not something to hide behind and once again be ridiculed for. Was it, did she name it? She didn't name it. I was wondering if it was Ozempic or one of those, but I'm glad she's being honest about it. Well, she probably didn't name it because she's probably working a deal. Man, can you imagine? Do you think so? If you're Oprah and you get Ozempic as an endorsement, that would just boost them even more into outer space. She still has a cult following. I mean, people will do what she says. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, Taylor Swift, right? Yeah, I mean, she was the original OG Taylor Swift. Remember, Oprah could just hold up some product for two seconds, and it would be sold mm-hmm. out. Or the book club, remember? Now yep. Reese has her book, book club. Uh, that's very suspicious that she's not mentioning what the drug is. I think there are probably negotiations yeah. going on. America's Most Wanted is returning to Fox on January 22nd at 8 p.m. with John Walsh. Had no idea it left. Well, it ran on Fox from 1988 until 2011. Then it was picked up by Lifetime and ran until 2013. Fox revived the show with Elizabeth Vargas. Okay, now he's coming back. Mm. After all these years, and you know, I guess with all the true crime stuff, right? This is the perfect time for Fox to bring that back. It's really smart. That was in the 90s. That was my favorite disco nap show. Like before going out and throttling on Saturday night. (laughs) The disco nap show. Yeah, you put it on, you're kind of half awake, half there, and you see what's-his-name doing his thing, his his stiff delivery. <laughs> that was then. That brings back total nostalgia. Finally. I guess it's the end of the year, and everybody wants to just, you know, be nice. Kid Rock says he's done boycotting Bud Light. He told Tucker Carlson in a recent interview that he was done. Quote, they deserved a black eye, and they got one. Do I want to hold their head underwater? And drown them because they made a mistake? No, I think they got the message. All right, thanks, Kid Rock. I wonder if he had some pressure, like, to do that. It just seems weird that he's backing off. I think, yeah, you're right. After all this time, like, why would he? Do you think somebody said something, or I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting. Tucker Carlson, you know, since he got squeezed out at Fox News, you know how how many people watch his online stuff? Isn't he starting a streaming service? Yeah, he's got his own. He went straight to it. He had like 120 million or something ridiculous the first time. I mean, think about that. 120 million compared to cable TV? It's, well, that's what I'm saying. He just said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go. My fans can find me. And apparently they did. And to overnight have people just follow you, right? Well, he already was building an audience, but he gets millions. Can you imagine the money he's making from that streaming? Barnes, we can't even get 20 listeners on our podcast. I know. Podcast. Can we get like 25? I've got to learn something from him. That is your celebrity sleaze.